Hey guys, welcome back. The layout in the basement, or I should say utility room, is a giant mess. So I've got to squeeze out one more review and then I have to do a massive cleanup just to keep going with reviews. So I'm going to do a review on this Atlas HO scale C420. Now this is a phase 2B low nose version. Um, it's Tennessee Central and it has factory equipped Loak Sound from ESU in there. So as you can see here, um, it's the Atlas Master Line locomotives, which are the really nice ones. MSRP $259.95. You can find discounts that will take it into the mid to high 100s. So there's always great deals to find, but let's get started on this review right now. Let's take a look at some details here. <laughs> the layout room is such a mess I can't find my pointer so I'm going to use a pen to go over some details of this locomotive. From the start you can see there are windshield wipers, metallic windshield wipers and well actually plastic molded windshield wipers. Um, you've got a horn up top, number boards with the actual classification lights there, headlight, Sand filler hatch, nose grab iron, coupler stand that goes up and down, stanchions here that are plastic, accessory hoses up front, along with MU hose, Atlas coupler here, coupler cut lever with the magnetic wand on the uh, coupler there. Safety tread on the walkways. You've got cab interior detailed and cab figures installed on both sides. You have nice truck detail there jacking pads, fuel detail. You have cab window sunshades that are uh, provided separately in the bag. We uh, won't install them. Usually have to do a little bit of modification to get those to fit just right. And sometimes glue them in and that just takes too long for the review. So I won't be putting those on, um, but you get those in an accessory bag. You got Tennessee Central along the side with all the compartments here. A fuel tank, like I mentioned, stanchions are very, very sturdy. They don't pop out of their holes. Uh, the actual handrails on this unit, a little hard to tell against the back, the black or darker background, but uh, let me tilt them up and you can see that they are razor sharp, razor straight, I should say, handrails, which is really good for plastic there. You've got rear mounted windshield wipers. You've got a fan grill here. You have exhaust here. Uh, the exhaust is molded on. There's not like a giant hole in the exhaust. I'll show you the top of the locomotive real quick. So there's the exhaust with the kind of a shallow mold there. And then also the fan grills, radiator fan grills on the back. Also uh, no like real, there's see-through detail but doesn't go like deep into the frame of the locomotive. You have grab irons on the back again lights. The lights are LEDs if anybody wants to know. More of the same in terms of coupler stand, safety chain, stanchions, coupler cut lever, atlas, coupler, and accessory hoses. And that about does it for the details. So pretty cool locomotive. Get it back up towards the front here so you can see Tennessee Central uh, paint scheme. So there you have it. Let's actually get into operation now. I'm going to apply track power which should fire up the startup sequence on this locomotive with the ESU Loak Sound decoder, so let's do that now. So you hear the chugging of the motor, it warms up. I'm going to go over some functions now. 
standard F0 being the headlight. I gotta shut off some functions to reset here. You also get the number boards that are lit up. A little hard to tell in this video, but you have almost has an incandescent bulb appearance, but I think it's LEDs, so yeah, that's a very, very good representation of incandescent bulbs there. Unless they are incandescent bulbs. Sometimes I mess up. F1 is bell. F2 is horn. short horn simply by quickly pressing F2 versus it having its own function. F3 is couple of plank. Let me shut the bell off so you can hear that better. F4 is diesel fans. F5 would be dynamic brake, but it, this model doesn't have a dynamic brake because it's before the days of dynamic braking, really. I believe, anyway. 6 would be operational ditch lights if they had them. 7, switching mode. 8 is mute. And then you can notch up and notch down with F9 and F10. Function F14 is cool. Defect, defector, de defect detector sounds. Add communication zones at 15. All of those may be disabled because of the error of the model. Well, let's go ahead and notch up and real quick so you can hear some of the notches since we don't go that fast when we do the slow motor control test. is all the way up there. Do you see that giant mess back there? That is all the reviews I've been doing. It is a giant mess and that's just part of the picture. So after this I'm gonna be drinking coffee, staying up late, and cleaning this giant mess up. All right I have silenced all the sounds so that you can hear the motor as I move it at slow speeds. A lot of people don't like noisy motors, especially ones that contend with the sound decoder. We're going to test out to see if this thing's noisy and how smooth it operates. 126 speed steps on my MRC Prodigy Elite, and we're going to go to 1 right now. I am hearing almost no motor noise whatsoever, and we've got a nice, smooth transition with no jerks at 1 speed step. Can I go to 2? Three, four, and five. Very, very smooth motor, very, very quiet motor, excellent decoder control. You may even be able to see how the number boards and headlights light up. Those headlights, if they are indeed LEDs, which I, they appear to be, Everything I've seen from Atlas, it's LEDs. They look absolutely incandescent. Amazing job there. We're going to go backwards at one. 
It's making me question whether they're incandescent at all. The locomotive earlier caught the grade crossing, so I just removed it because I have never glued it down because some locomotives do catch it. I should file down the bottoms, sand down the bottoms to make them even flatter. I just never got around to it. Two. Very, very smooth operation in reverse two. Very important to check both directions because the motor has two directions to go and you could have smooth sailing one way and not the other. Three is good, four is good, and five is good. So very, very quiet motor and very, very smooth transition. Going to do the pull test live here. People prefer that over me just annotating it in the notes. We are at 2.8 ounces and it appears 2.9 and it's 2.9 ounces. Two, in between 2.8 and 2.9 ounces. Now I'm trying to tell people every video just so I get the word spread. I've done some research a viewer told me and then I looked into it more about every ounce is around 15 pieces of average rolling stock so you're looking at this pulling almost 45 pieces of rolling stock on its own all right we are sneaking into my home office here lights are off it's my pull size rents Lombardi trophy Lombardi trophy when the Colts won the Super Bowl against the Bears okay back to trains back to trains Let's see, we have on here, Tennessee Valley locomotive, 15.1 ounces, 430 grams, 0.43 kilograms, 0 0.430 kilograms, 0.94 pounds. So basically just shy of a pound. And I'm being quiet because for some reason the vents in this area go straight up to my kids bedrooms and they are fast asleep so that is the weights and this is where i edit videos usually well guys that about wraps up the review on the atlas c420 phase 2b low nose locomotive again dc dcc esu loc sound great value when you consider that a lot of locomotives in the industry are going towards 300 dollars now and then when you look at the street prices, you get a pretty good break. You know, it could easily be 70 or $80 from what you're paying for some sound diesel locomotives. Maybe not the exact same. I don't know if anybody else has produced this, but you get my point. Um, Alice does a great job. I'm glad they paired up with ESU. I think the ESU decoder and the quality and value of that being in such a nice low priced locomotive in my opinion being low priced uh, in today's terms is is great so great locomotive now i'm going to leave you with a run by usually you're dead on uh at a t angle from the track you know you're looking at the locomotive as it goes directly by i'm gonna do something a little different today i'm gonna round a corner that way you get to see the headlights the number boards and i'm gonna kill this light so it's a little darker it's not the most beautiful part of my layout it's probably one of the worst but you'll get to see the headlights You'll get to see the number boards, you'll get to see the locomotive going by, and I'll do the uh, grade crossing sequence with the bell too. So enjoy that, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.